Hi, welcome back. This is the UC300 ETH. It's a controller which can be used for CNC machines. It was produced in Hungary. Hungary is a country? <laughs> Hungary in Europe. Made by CNC Drive. And maybe some of you can remember the AXBBE I was using in my CNC mill. It was really good, to be honest. The communication between the PC and the controller was really stable, thanks to the Ethernet connection, which is also in this. This time I will be using this one. It has a lot more inputs and outputs. And for my CNC life, which I'm actually making, it will be a big difference because I need a lot of inputs to make everything work. It's going to have a lot of functions, which thanks to the controller, I will be able to apply to my machine. It's got six ports, five of them are LPT ports, standard and extended ones, and one of them for analog inputs and outputs. It's got two analog outputs and two analog inputs. It's got a lot of digital inputs and outputs on the different LPT ports. Also this unit needs an external power supply of 5 volts DC, which can be connected through this connector. So summarizing, we have all together 36 digital outputs and 39 digital inputs. Well, in my opinion, that's a lot. Hopefully it will be enough to drive my machine. Also speaking of the analog inputs and outputs, there are available two inputs and two outputs. So you could, uh, for example, drive two VFDs, for example, two, two spindles. If you are good at programming, you can even write your own macros and you can make your own use of the outputs and inputs. Let's say sky is the limit. Well, maybe not sky, the two outputs and two inputs. Anyway, to connect to the ports, there are usually used breakout boards. This is the UCBB. It's a breakout board which can be connected to two of the ports of the controller and it will allow me to connect to the pins and to make use of them. Speaking of ports, there are two types. There are extended ones and the standard ones. The main difference is that the standard ones have more outputs while the extended ones have a lot more inputs than outputs. So we can, this green board, connect to one extended port and one standard port. So if you want to use this controller, you need such a breakout board. There are also breakout boards suited for just one port. Those are smaller and uh, can utilize just one port. This one can use two ports of the controller. If we want to use more inputs or outputs, we can buy, for example, two such breakout boards. So if we have uh, two, we could use four ports of this controller. To connect these two, we need cables. These are IDC26 cables with female connectors. And with use of these, we can connect this controller and this breakout board. We have to pay attention to connect the standard ports together and the extended ports together. In addition, we have to supply with power this breakout board as well. It needs 24 volts DC and it connects over here. But utilizing the ports of the controller will be a topic for a later video. Today I'd like to focus on the basic setup of this controller. We have to connect it to the computer, which will be controlling this controller. And this controller will be controlling the drives of, of our machine, all the electrical devices. Speaking of this controller, here are some parameters. If you need to drive a servo, to use a linear scale, to make threads, to drive stepper motors, it all will work with this one. And I'm pretty sure the connection, thanks to the Ethernet port, 
will be very stable which sometimes isn't the case using the standard LPT port which is quite slow or when using the USB port which are not prone to electrical interference with the Ethernet port I've had already quite good experience that's why I recommend using Ethernet if you don't want to buy the cheapest controller but the controller which will allow you to work with stability also, there is this small reset button, which is used to reset the network settings. Now to work with the controller, we need a PC. I bought this for my machine. It's quite small and it should be enough to drive a simple machine. It has a, an Ethernet port, some USB ports, which will be important too. The power supply, if somebody cares, this is the Think Center from Lenovo. It's quite small and uh, relatively cheap if you buy a used one. Also, this controller can run with a Mach 3, Mach 4 and with the UCCNC, which I prefer is the software made by them, which works with uh, those controllers quite well. Speaking of requirements from the PC to drive this uh, controller, at least OpenGL 1.3, which is usually the case with newer PCs, sometimes with older PCs, there could be needed a dedicated graphics card. In this situation, we have an Intel graphics card, which has OpenGL 1.3 even higher. So uh, this PC will work with this controller perfectly. Also to work with the system, we need a display. I bought the cheapest display with a touch screen. Let's fire up this bad boy. This is the keyboard. It has a touchpad. It, uh, it cost me like 12 bucks, something like that. Now speaking, of the Ethernet port. To connect the computer to the port of the controller, we need the Ethernet cable, but there are two different types of Ethernet cables. There are straight ones and crossover ones. We can use both of them to connect the controller to the PC, but if we want to use a straight cable, we would have to connect it uh, through a router. And if we want to plug it in uh, directly to the PC, we can use a crossover cable. Uh, the difference between the one and the second uh, was described in my video about AXBBE. So if you are interested, uh, check out that video. Uh, link in the description. So speaking of the connection, I will use the crossover cable now to connect it to my computer. Also, if you are building a machine, I recommend you to use a PC which has a SSD. The machine will start up much quicker. And recently, nobody has time for waiting before the machine starts up. I have experience with that. In order to make it work, we have to supply the five volts uh, DC uh, to this connector, and then we will be able to fire it up. This is a PC power supply, which provides 5 volts, 12 volts. So for my tests, it will be perfect. But for power supplying that controller, I suggest to use such switching power supplies, which are sufficient for such works. I can't use this one because this is for 24 volts, but there are such supplies for other voltages like 5, 12, 24, 36, 48. But today I'm going to use this one. Nope. This breakout board has its own 5 volt output. So for the test, I'm going to input some 24 volts to the input and use the 5 volt output from this breakout board.
perfect. Now to start anything, we have to put the UCCNC license file uh, to the folder while we have installed the software so we can start the configuration. And here we are, our CNC control system is ready to go. Now we can configure the, the devices which will be connected to the controller. Uh, for example, the spindle, the axis drives, the stepper motors or servos. Depends on what are you going to use. The limit switches, uh, the linear scales if you are going to use them, index signals. In future videos, I'm going to show you the configuration of all of the devices I'm going to use with the CNC Live, which I'm making. So all the topics will be covered and I will try to keep it as simple as possible. As I stated before, I'm going to keep it simple. I have a guess that it's going to be a quite interesting project so if you're interested well subscribe and thanks for watching and see you next time